Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks here today with another Tech Tip Tuesday. These Tech Tip Tuesdays are based around the questions we get from you guys on a regular basis. We like to answer them and give people something to take a look at when they're building their car so they can learn when they have time and it definitely uh, helps with better understanding to see things on videos. So today we're talking about different fitting styles. Whether you know it or not, there's a bunch of different fitting styles out there in the world. And there are uh, three that we're going to talk about today, actually four. We're going to talk about pipe thread, O-ring, ORB, also known as O-ring. Um, we're going to talk about face seal, and then we're going to talk about AN style uh, seal fittings. So we'll start off with the most basic, and that is an NPT fitting, national pipe thread. It's called a number of different things. And the one thing they have in common is you'll see that on the thread itself, it actually has a taper. So it goes from small to large. If you're looking at the actual um, piece that it's screwing into, it, the thread is basically straight all the way down except for a real small chamfer on the top, which just kind of takes the burr off. So how these fittings seal is actually by wedging themselves in there as you screw them down there. And that tightens up the metal and creates a seal. Now, I'll note that you have to have uh, some type of a sealant on an NPT fitting, whether it's uh, pipe tape or pipe dope. Now, definitely be careful on using uh, thread tape, depending on what application you're doing. Uh, nitrous guys basically bar it completely. They don't want you to run pipe tape. What it does is it gets in the solenoids and uh, the jets and it causes issues. That's no good. Of course, you're gonna burn up a motor if that does that. Also, in a fuel system, it's kind of a no-no to use pipe tape because what happens is it breaks off and it gets into your filters, your injectors, your carburetor, and that's just a hard to find problem and it's surely gonna cause you issues. So if you do use pipe dope, make sure you use a fuel, gas, oil approved safe type of pipe dope uh, or liquid pipe sealer. Um, there's some out there that are and there's some out there that aren't compatible with chemicals. So. Our vacuum block and our um, remote mount sensors, we have a single and a dual. Those are all pipe tap, and the reason why, we would love to do them in an ORB style fitting, but it's not very common to find these small fittings in an ORB. They're hard to get, they're hard to find, and some of them just aren't simply made, so we use eighth inch NPT. Uh, NPT fittings come commonly in eighth, sixteenth, eighth, quarter, three eighths, half inch, three quarter, and so on. Um, if you ever have questions on the actual diameter of that and which is which, there's a lot of charts online that can help you with that. So now that you know about NPT fittings, we'll move on to ORB. A lot of people don't know the difference between these two, when they're used, when they're not. So an ORB fitting actually has an O-ring at the base. And the difference is this threaded part is actually going to be a straight thread, so there's no taper to it. And then it seals off this O-ring. And how it seals is, if you look at our uh, thermostat adapter, um, there's actually a counter bore inside of this uh, spot here. So when you screw this fitting in, that O-ring has a place to sit. And we have, um, if you use the correct tooling to do an ORB style fitting, it'll actually have a certain amount of squish and interference with the O-ring that it seals properly. Um, screws down all the way. Now these fittings are always going to screw all the way down. They're going to be flush. An O-ring, that's how you know an O-ring fitting's there. You're basically running it all the way home. So it's going to be less likely to ever strip out. Whereas an NPT fitting, you're always going to have thread sticking out. That's just the nature of the taper of it all. So you'll see the pipe dope and the tape and it's just unsightly. Definitely a lot cleaner solution to use an O-ring fitting. Uh, typically more low profiles. They save space. They look better all around the best. We try to use them in any situation when we can uh, when we're doing a fitting as long as it's commercially available and possible. Now I will say one thing about uh, ORB fittings. Most fuel systems and uh, water fittings uh, nowadays are using ORB fittings. So another example is the Aeromotive. They have that nice counter bore in here and that's the correct way to do an ORB fitting. Now there are a bunch of um, fuel rails on the market. This isn't one of them. This has an actual uh, nice sealing area. There's a few different ways to do an ORB seal. There's a lot of people out there today cutting corners and all they're simply doing is cutting a straight thread and um, just doing a chamfer on the very top. And that basically squishes the O-ring and a lot of those 
cheap fuel rails and parts, you'll actually see the O-ring sticking out a little bit and uh, it doesn't seal properly. You'll also notice that when you go to tighten things down, the fitting never gets tight. It just basically screws all the way in with almost no interference. You'll see this fitting, actually I can't turn it all the way in by hand, so I'm gonna have to use a wrench to finish it in. Um, that creates an interference that not only keeps the fitting from backing out, but also creates a good seal. These cheap uh, fuel rails that you'll see, they, you can run them all the way in by hand, they'll back out, they're gonna cause fuel leaks, fires, it's not done correctly. And the reason why is the tooling itself is actually quite expensive to tool up and do a proper ORB style fitting. And it's a little, it's another step. So a lot of people try to cut corners. If you see those fuel rails, avoid them, buy something better. Um, it's not worth the leak, the possibility of having an issue and an engine fire or whatever that would, is gonna come of that. So be cognizant of that. If you see just that small chamfer on the end, that's not the correct, correct style seal and it's gonna cause you problems most likely. Uh, the next seal that we'll talk about is a face seal style fitting. This is a fitting that you'll see go into a Turbo 400. Um, you'll see that has a aluminum or copper washer typically for Golasens aluminum ones. It's just a soft metal that allows things to seal. So this fitting too is gonna to go all the way in and it's actually gonna seal off of both sides of that washer. So this, the face of the transmission and then the face of this fitting are gonna basically crush that washer to seal. You'll see there's a little step in there. One thing that I've ruined or messed up in the past before is when I'm running this in, I'm not paying attention and that this doesn't get uh, set properly on that step and you'll actually crush the washer and then that becomes an issue. So make sure that's seated properly. If you're looking at it from the top, you know, the o-ring, the, the washer is going to be evenly spaced all around. If it's installed incorrectly, you're going to see more hanging out on one side versus the other. It's a really common thing to uh, have issues with. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about are actual AN style sealing. So if you look on the end of this fitting, this is an AN male fitting, this is an AN female fitting, there's a 37 degree taper. That's an industry standard. That's why they call it AN. It's 37 degree AN, JIC. There's a bunch of different names from it. These threads here have no bearing on how this seals. The seal of this actual fitting comes from the metal on metal contact between that surface and this surface. It's just a mechanical seal and the metals are machined properly and they just face meet, face seal and uh, that's how they seal. So this fitting, contrary to popular belief, doesn't need any type of pipe tape, uh, no liquid seal or pipe dope, nothing like that. If it does, there's something wrong with the fitting. It's either machined incorrectly here or here. Replace the fitting, call the person you got it from. There's something wrong with it. Another uh, trend that we've seen that can be good and bad, uh, a lot of companies have developed these O-ring to hose end style fittings. The only place that I suggest these being used, the only place they're good is in a low profile area where you can't have a stack up of fittings. You'll see how low profile they are when you remove that one fitting from the middle of them. Um, of course, this is a, not the same style fitting, but it makes this area here shorter. So if you're under something that doesn't have clearance here, it gives you that ability. The one thing that you'll wanna be careful with on these fittings, every time you take an O-ring uh, fitting apart, you have a chance of damaging this actual O-ring. When, when you squish it down, when you take it apart, uh, you can always damage it. So, you know, if it's a, a thing that comes apart often at the track when you're working on it on the weekends, it can really be a pain if you use this all in one fitting because if you just wanna take the hose end off, these are made to be taken apart and put together a bunch of times without having any type of failure or replacing any type of disposable. This, on the other hand, if you take it apart one time, you have a chance of it tearing or having not sealing back up when it goes back together. So. Think about these when you're using them. If you use them in the wrong places, they can be really inconvenient if you don't have the O-rings in your toolbox or your trailer. So be careful if you're using this part on something that gets serviced often, avoid it at all costs. You're gonna be sick of replacing the O-rings or the one time that it does screw you, it's gonna really upset you. Another thing I'll note, when you're putting an O-ring fitting together, um, if this is your first time, make sure you use some sort of lubricant on the O-ring that's approved. Uh, Typically, we'll use like a silicone spray, and that'll allow it to get down into that counter bore there um, without tearing or wadding up. 
and uh, they'll safely seal it along um, both the inside and outside so that you can put it together and take it apart with less chance of having issues with O-rings. So another quick tip, I got this one from my buddy Garrett Mitchell, also known as Cletus McFarland. When I was down at their shop the last time, they busted out one of these paint markers. It's Dykem brand, D-Y-K-E-M, Bright Mark. You can find them on Amazon, uh, as well as a number of other places. It's just a paint marker that actually has a durable finish that matches the black anodizing. I see a lot of people, including myself, have used Sharpie in the past. It turns like blue purple, and as soon as you touch it with any type of oil or your hands just in general, it'll just wipe right off. This thing actually creates a nice durable uh, touch up for a fitting. And if you're like me, you damage fittings when you put them together. And when it dries, it basically matches identical. So if you're OCD, um, these fittings turn out looking just like they came from the factory. It's super cool and uh, makes things look a lot nicer when you're, put to get, when you're done putting them together. The one thing I will note is if you're new to AN fittings, use the proper wrenches to put them together. Uh, steel style crescent wrench is definitely gonna mark them up. Invest in a nice set of AN wrenches. Don't wrap them with tape. All that does is allow the wrench to rock back and forth, which will damage the fitting. A couple companies make nice carbon fiber and plastic style AN wrenches that are hardened. And uh, those work really well because they're not gonna damage the fittings when you're putting them together. So one more time if you missed it because this is what we get a lot of questions about. NPT fittings, they get pipe tape or liquid sealant. O-ring fittings, no liquid sealant or pipe tape. AN fittings, no liquid sealant or pipe tape. There's nothing that seals here and you need the metal on metal in there. So there's no need to put any type of seal in it. It just makes things messy. Anyways, guys, I hope this Tech Tip Tuesday helped you guys out. Please definitely share with a friend if they need it. Comment below. Tell us how we're doing. Let us know what you want us to address next. That's how we kind of get our oxygen as far as this Tech Tip Tuesday thing goes. We love it. We've had great feedback. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.